Welcome, folks, to the Corporation Nation radio program. I'm Clint Richardson. It is Friday, the 28th of February. Welcome to the show. Uh, today's guest is uh, Tammy Pepperman. I've I've been uh, really looking forward to having her on this show because one of the one of the great adventures in this journey that we're all partaking with each uh, together uh, is the is is the discovery of the very nature of the words we use every day. And I've been I've been trying to convince people lately that basically everyone has different forms of the truth. And the reason, the real reason that we have different versions of truth going all throughout what we call the truth movement and just in general is simply because that truth is only good as our understanding of the language we use to describe that truth. I can't tell you how many times I've looked back, even in my own writings, especially in my own writings, and I've just wanted to kick myself, uh, not not punish myself, but just say, "Gosh, imagine if 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 we didn't have this language barrier. If we did, if we if we actually knew the, the 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 actual definitions of the words we use every day, how they relate to us in both the natural and the well, the artificial world we call law. And boy, it's it's amazing. I, I wanted to I wanted to kick this off by so that we understand." the nature of law, where it comes from, who is using and abusing it, and who is pretending to play God. I wanted to, I wanted to read a quote and explain that uh, there's a gentleman named Noah Webster, and he, of course, is the Webster's Dictionary guy. And it's, it's you know, we, we take the uh, dictionary for granted, and, the, and the, the dictionaries of today coming from the Webster Corporation, which is not Noah Webster, are completely different than what he envisioned in his dictionary. And this is why the 1828 Dictionary of the English Language by Noah Webster is so, so important. And I wanted to just really make hit this home. Because Webster, he, he considered education useless without the Bible. Well, of course, if you don't know the context of the words you're using and that they, the law stems from the Bible, those who are using and abusing it, well, yeah, it is worthless unless you understand that. That's why we have... Such a huge plantation, uh, which is the, another word for colony, a huge farm, as, as, as Tammy likes to call it. That's why we have all these chattel around. That's why we're all guilty of ignorance. It's because we've ignored the roots of the words. Uh, he utilized God's written word as a key to the meaning of the words. He, he, in other words, he referred to Scripture quite often uh, in the book. It was the most important resource. This is the reason the Webster 1828 is one of the most important reprints of the 20th century. Uh, the essential tool of education for Christians. Compare, uh, compare definitions. Da, da, da. His quote is this, and then we'll get to Tammy. In my view, quote, in my view, the Christian religion is the most important and one of the first things in which all children under a free government ought to be instructed. Free government's kind of a funny word. Uh, no truth is more evident to my mind uh, than, that, than that of the Christian religion uh, must be the basis of any government intended to secure the rights and privileges of a free people. Now, I'm sure there's uh, some flaws in that statement, uh, but the point that uh, he was making is that the language is useless without the Scripture because the law, the legal language as we're going to discover through etymology and other things today. Boy, folks, prepare to be blown away because Tammy, <laughs> I should just sit back and let Tommy, Tammy talk the full uh, hour and 20 minutes that we have. But uh, Tammy, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me. Tammy, do we have you? Tammy, do you have a mute button? <laughs> wow. No, I, I keep uh, bouncing off and on. and, and uh, Oh, there you go. You bounced off again. Uh-oh. Well, what's going on here? Tammy and I have been texting back and forth through Skype all day, and looks like we have a poor internet connection, but we've been we've been typing back and forth all day, and she's just been blowing my mind making me really, really understand a lot of the things that I thought I fully understood but did not. 
uh, she pointed me. <laughs> she pointed me to one thing that I want to share. Since uh, we're gonna try to get her back, um, she point. <laughs> <laughs> she pointed me to the etymology, and this just hit it home for me. If you go to, it's it's actually etymology online, or just if you type in etymology, it'll be the first thing to come up. But uh, the word Washington, where did the word Washington come from? Now we know that, like for instance, my name is uh, Richardson, son of Richard. It's a it's a familial name. Uh, Smith would be a blacksmith. You know, he had all these different names. Of course, in, in the in the in the Jewish portion, you had a lot of gold, <laughs> silver, uh, and money money related things. But uh, the point is, uh, the the capital, the U.S. capital, in other words, Washington D.C., the district, the corporation was named for George Washington. What does that mean? Old English literally translate to the estate of a man named Wassa. W-A-S-S-A. Wasso actually uh, means vassal, which means basically <laughs> the, that he would be the, the landlord and on behalf of his superior, which since he's cousins with the king that he was supposedly against, would, would make a lot of sense that he was the sort of the landlord of the king and collected the revenues and taxes for the king in the bankruptcy and in the debts that were assigned in the Constitution. So, fascinating, fascinating stuff. She's been throwing words at me all day that have just blown my mind. Do we Do we have Tammy back? I'm here now. I, okay. I ended up the call in, and it appears like Skype is not going to want to work with her. All right. Well, not quite as clear, but you still sound good. Uh, what? I'm curious, Tammy. What, what got you? Uh, uh, by the way, Tammy's websites are uh, chooseyourside.org and Tammy Pepperman. That's T A M I Pepperman dot com. She does a a weekly radio show, I believe, on Saturdays, uh, which I get links to sent to me all the time. And uh, that's Saturdays on freedomslips uh, dot org, I believe, right? dot com. dot com. Yes. Uh, what what actually got you into this pursuit? Well, it started um, in 2000. Uh, in around 97, 98, I was working for the Catholic Diocese. And um, when during the time when I was working for them, they had other agents there that were trying to induct me. And then I witnessed with my own eyes sexual abuse of children. And so I started going up and up and up and up through the Catholic Diocese. I was working at Harbor Creek Youth Services at that time. And, of course, this is putting myself through law school, which I'm glad I didn't get to finish. Um, the, uh, what had occurred is, is when I was going after the Catholic Diocese, that immediately they started killing my husband. And by um, August 21st, they had achieved their goals and put me back on my knees. And, um, you know, it took me a quite a while to uh, come back from the trauma uh, because of what they did. That's All right, Tay, we'll, we'll take a break. I want you to explain that when you say they killed your husband and they were messing with you, obviously. We have a lot of people who are, well, abused by the system. So we'll, we'll be back, folks. Stay with us. First of all, let me take just a moment to thank you for allowing me back into your homes. If this is your first time with us, let me extend a personal invitation. Let's build a happy little cloud. Let's build some happy little trees. There are no limits here. You start out by believing here. Is it your world? You're the creator. Find freedom on this canvas. All right, folks, welcome back. I'll tell you, <laughs> I wish people could hear the conversations we've been having all day and, and even off 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 air. But uh, we'll we'll reserve 
things for on air. Uh, t- tell me, Tammy, you said that you witnessed some things, obviously, that um, <laughs> aren't supposed to be talked about in the Catholic Church, and you went sort of against it and, and started learning all of this stuff. So, so what exactly happened with your with your family? Well, back then I started going up against him, but I made a terrible, terrible mistake. I told them that I would hold them accountable. And so I spoke my intent contrary to what Jesus maintained. And, um, so of course they killed my husband. Within the three, three years following that, they killed 37 other family members back to back. One car accident, um, explosions without cause. Uh, Uncle Tim committed suicide by holding a bag of chemical over his head, you know, these kind of things, and um, it was all to put me down, because I, I knew what was going on, and I knew it from the inside, and that's what they do to Job. Job continues to patronize the landlord, or the Lord God, as defined in Corinthians 6, and I was still patronizing it, and I was blaming myself, what did I do to deserve this stuff? So I was a bad girl. I never contemplated back at that moment in time that it was them preying on me and teaching me that I was a bad girl through the use of religious indoctrination. Not the Bible, not the Word of God or the walk of God, but religious indoctrination. And so I was hoping for Jesus, I was waiting around for Jesus to come, and I was I was integrated with the system. But once I really, I got this, um, one, I got an article by Henry Maykel, and I thought he was insane at that time. He sent out this article. He has Dave, uh, Dave the Mail dot CA. He's a PhD, and I set off on a path to prove him wrong. He sent out this article that says that the United States Incorporated is a vessel, it's a ship, uh, it's floating on water, all of these things. Well, it was that quest that led me here because it's a vessel. It's claiming to be a sovereign state. Um, it wasn't created as a geographical or physical state. It was created as a style or chain of events, congressional actions, which is maintained in Articles of Confederation. And it actually is a vessel, and it's pretending to be you, the vessel. You are actually the actual physical state. That thing is a concept. And so the, the, people, the people are actually a state, and what we mean by that is a state of being? Absolutely, and they perverted that. And now they call it a state, like the United States, or a sovereign state, or a foreign state, or all of these different states that are fictional. They're all concepts. They're created by words on a piece of paper, or documents, or charters, but they're created only in the mind. A concept is only created in the mind. It gets you to see it, but it actually never existed. So really, the government is very much like a church. <clears throat> it wants you to believe uh, something totally opposite uh, uh, than what the actual <laughs> thing it's supposed to be teaching. Right. It is the church. Church means a group of people. It doesn't mean the Word of God. It doesn't mean the walk of God. It means a group of people. Which is why you don't have to belong to a church to be a Christian. Right. But the threat of excommunication has you under their thumb, doesn't it? The, the what? I'm sorry? The threat of excommunication has you under their thumb. The, the threat of deportation, the threat of arrest, the threat of excommunication from this body politic has you under the thumb. That's fear. They're creating that fear in your mind. So you're, you're, you're afraid to leave the cult, basically, the religious cult, which is the Washington, D.C. Absolutely. Congress itself, uh, Congress needs with transgression. And everybody is suffering from what is known as Stockholm Syndrome. They're patronizing their capture in exchange for protection. But religion is patronizing something in exchange for protection. Government representation is patronizing something in exchange for protection. And there again, all, all these words you're using, <laughs> I can hear them myself, but I don't know if, uh, if other people, when you say representation, you mean... Being a father. You're patronizing it. Padre means father. When you're patronizing something, you're calling it your father. So it's something that is represented as something it's not. Absolutely. Representation, yes. Absolutely. And through its indoctrination programs, the education means, it stems from the word pedagogy, meaning attendance on boys. That's the removal of the firstborn son is through education. 
And as you're indoctrinated and walked away from yourself, which is the action of exodus, the second book of the Bible, which is the manifest, exo means outside of, and Zeus means God. You are God, and being outside of God means that you're patronizing or calling a judge your father. Moses was a judge. And in Matthew 23, Jesus went off on him. He says, what the heck are you doing sitting at the right hand of a judge instead of the right hand of God? You're the father. And when you can be recreated in such manner by Lord God or Congress through education, it, it's modifying you. It's telling you what to be rather than allowing you to be what you already are. Well, you, you referred me to something today that kind of blew my mind as well. I mean, that's pretty much all you do, really. But uh, it's blown my mind. But you, you referred me to the actual first United States patent statute, Patent Act of 1790, um, which basically, <laughs> as we were discussing, you said it's a, you know, if we, if we consider that the United States, which is, again, this corporation, this chartered thing, this creation of paper, in if we think of it as nothing more than a giant corporation or factory that's just pumping out artificial persons. It's pumping out every possible artificial context that it can because it can't deal with anything real. can't deal with anything natural. It has to put a name on something. So it's interesting because you, you, you were saying that the, the reason that the... <laughs> it's funny. The reason that the patent statute was created was literally to patent all of these things that the government is creating all of us all of our persons all of our numbers all of our contractual obligations all the names that it gives us and i thought that was that was actually wow what a right. what a what a mind screw right the land patents always refer to the human being because they cannot be altered a patent is used to alter the original thing but the ground never goes anywhere the patent was already on the human being from the letters patent way back at the original charter. They were giving territories. Territory refers to the human being. It's land. It doesn't mean, it doesn't refer to the ground. They've never had a patent on the ground because it never changes. It's all one ground. It's reality. Right, right. And they cannot hold a patent on the actual ground. They can only patent a human being because it can modify the human being through social engineering, through uh, human behavior modification, which is the use of doctrine. Doc means to teach, and trend means three times. So That's say that time. again. Doctrine means what? Doc? Doc means to teach, and trend means three times. Every time you're exposed to a doctrine, a religious doctrine, for example, you're being taught three times in three different variants. Meta, which is morality. Soma, which is psychology. And Veta, which is ethics. So they repeat those words three times in the language of morality, in the language of psychology, and in the language of ethics in order to indoctrinate you. That's how they're modifying the human being. It's calling you back from some bad boys in order for to spank you into being good girls and good boys, and that's how you produce. You're always seeking to be, and Jesus, Jesus was so adamant about that one, don't covet anything. If you're seeking to be, you're coveting yourself. You want to be. We control every wow, Doc Trinity! Wow, that's a, that's an amazing. <laughs> Again, folks, I'm I'm uh, it just as in awe as, as some of you may be. Hopefully, all of you. We'll be back, folks, with uh, Tammy Pepperman. Welcome back, folks. Here in the Corporation Nation, my guest today, Tammy Pepperman. Tappy, Tammy Pepperman dot org, and that's T A M I Pepperman. Oh boy, chooseyourside.org is the other website. Uh, <laughs> again, I hate the fact that we're talking in the commercial break. I, I almost am going to ban us talking any other time than on the show because I, you know, <laughs> we just we go over whole subject matters off air. Now you were telling me on on the break we were discussing language that the English language is generally basically. <clears throat> Uh, just a combination of the Greek and the Latin thrown together in a way that, uh, well, it's 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 really a, a, a deceiving language, unfortunately. But uh, to explain the uh, explain the description and all that. Well, and and uh, to add on, Latin is the language of contracts. So every time you're using that, 
use of Latin, you're contracting. Um, for example, in Black's Law Dictionary, the closest you can ever become or, or come to be believing is in posterity, already being the posterity. They describe you as being in the past tense. English is actually the language of commerce. In the language of commerce, you're outside of yourself four times at any given moment in time. We're referring to ourselves. We're speaking each other's names. We're saying what we're doing or what we just did rather than being in a relative state. We're describing each other. D-E means of. Inscribe means to write. And in description, we're, we're all the way completely psychologically outside of our state of being. We're in the past tense, always seeking to be. I want to be that when I grow up. I have to be this. I have to do this in order to attain that goal. You're never in this relative state of being because you're seeking to be. And that's what Jesus was so adamant about, about saying, do not covet. He meant don't covet the self. Don't seek to be. Just be. So you're basically, again, you're born naked. And, and at, at that point, you're basically the most innocent that you'll ever be in your life. And from that point on, you are constantly bombarded with symbolism and uh, different forms of what you call uh, concepts, which is something we really need to really need to understand, I think. And, and that suddenly, uh, the best way I think you explained it to me is that when you're born and your eyes are finally opened, of course, you actually see everything around you and you don't consider yourself. You're looking around at the in amazement and everything that's going on around you. You're, you're looking at people around you with awe and wonder and respect and contemplation. And then as we grow up, I mean, even in the first couple of years, suddenly it's mine. Mine. Everything's mine. I want that. I'm not sharing go away look he's a bad man because he looks he, he's ugly or he's you know th this is speaks to what you're saying i mean we we are we're just bombarded from birth basically and we lose that innocence so quick that w w basically what you're referring to which, which was the the coveting and the we, we start respecting persons against against the advice of the bible uh, almost immediately and respecting ourselves, respecting. We end up seeing each other in another way. Spectacle, spect means to see. So if we're respecting each other, we're seeing each other in another way. It's a form of representation. <laughs> we're respecting, we're respecting the artificiality, the identity as opposed to the, the soul, if you will. Interesting. Right. The ego, the super ego and the id. Id is identity. Ego is mine, 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 you know, and then you have the super ego that says me, 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 me. It, it cries out in narcissism uh, just to be the center of attention. And we have to all back away from us that and divest of all of those things that possess us because I'm only seeing you. When I look out of my eyes, I'm seeing you. And that's what Jesus said. Take up your cross and follow me. That means follow you, protect you. That doesn't mean protect me or protect my assets or protect myself. Myself never existed until they taught me to view myself by looking inward. How is that possible except for in imagination? Well, one of the, one of the first tools we get as a, a toys as we get as a baby is a mirror. Absolutely, and and same thing with pets. If you've ever had any pets, they, they growl at the mirror. They're not taught. Me, 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 mine. They, they don't take up concepts. I, I've tried over and over and over again to give this cat a dollar bill. He won't take it. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to trade with the dog. Hey, I'll trade you some kibble for. That's funny. Um, right. Well, I mean, what this we're talking happens. about is is what the what the if I'm not mistaken in my mythologies, the Greeks referred to as narcissists. Absolutely, and it's able to view itself in the, everything, including the Bible. The Bible is actual, it's a test, it's a trial by fire. The Old Testament is the ship manifest, it's how to break the human being. Um, and then the New Testament, of course, Jesus is walk, he's telling you how to walk out of it. How to walk on top of the sea of commerce. He walked on water, 
He walked on top of the Sea of Commerce. He said, for those that harm children, you wrap the millstone around their neck and throw them into the Sea of Commerce. Go let them play in court. Go let them spend eternity in hell. Hell is the lower chambers of the exchequer, and the marshals are over hell as the custodian of hell. That means that jails are hell. The marshals stand there over the jails, discharging congressional bankruptcy, the king's bankruptcy. When so, Congress came in to represent you, they're calling themselves the king. But that means that we're all living basically in a open-air version of the executor's debtor's prison. We're all debtors as citizens. We're right. in an open-air prison claiming, instead of uh, a dungeon. Right. Only if you're claiming to be their property. If you're a citizen, you're in hell. If you're an individual, you're in hell because you're claiming to be a debtor to them. If you're, you're claiming a to be a debtor. Right. If if you're a sovereign state of being, you're not a debtor, you're not an individual, you're not a female, which is a gender. Gender signifies we're a new genus. So if you're claiming to be a male, you're claiming to be a stock option of the United States Incorporated. If you claim to be a teacher, you're a stock option. Any fiction is defined in the exchequer under the, the rules of the thesaurus. A thesaurus under the rules of the exchequer means that's what the gold is. That's what they're trading on. Every time you claim one of these titles, they're taking you to discharge the king's bankruptcy. And in this instance, the king is, is or Congress is pretending to be the king. You can go back to their emergency banking act and their bankruptcy and everything else. They came in as the trustee over their own bankruptcy in 1933. Can you do that yeah. if you file for bankruptcy? Can you be the trustee and then say, oh, I want Clint over there to offset my bankruptcy. And I want Simon. I want Joe. I want Billy over there to discharge my bankruptcy. I'll be the trustee. And they said that same exact thing in 1777 in the Articles of Confederation and when they pledged and charged. Of course. We, we, we tried to use Skype there, and it looks like it just cut out again. Are you there, Tammy? <laughs> oh, man. We have Jim Trafficken, or James Trafficken also, uh, in Congressional Records, standing up basically saying, uh, we're presiding here over the largest bankruptcy in history, that of the United States. Go look it up, folks. It's true. Uh, from what I understand, we, the bankruptcy has to be sort of re-declared every 70 years. And so you have events like the Civil War, and you have currency changes, and you have sort of a new, almost like a new corporation being built every 70 years. What happened in the last time they were declaring bankruptcy? Well, it was around 9-11. What happened uh, the Civil War? You know, <laughs> So, yeah, good times. Uh, Tammy, do we have you back, or are we going to have to phone call? I've got you now. I don't know okay. what the feedback is going to be like, because I called in as well. Well, right now, you sound good. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. I do hear you. <laughs> Sorry, that was the feedback from the... Oh, and now you've cut out again. Yeah. Darn it, it was going so good there, too. Always when you have someone that's saying things that they're not supposed to say, revealing things that they're not supposed to reveal, it seems like those are the people that have phone problems. What is it with that, huh? Welcome back, Tammy. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll try it again. See how long. Maybe we'll go even longer next next hour well, on Skype. It never ends, does it? No. Dragons no. minions out there. You know what happens to the dragon when it delegates its authority, uh, its authority right? It eats its own tail. And it's got all these minions and, and human agents and FBI agents and CIA agents and everything else. But it always, always, always is written in Revelation that it eats its own tail. Uh, Europe, Europe Boris, is that right? Give it again. Uh, the Euroboros concept? Yeah, Ouroboros, yes. Yeah. Are you see, this is the actual thesaurus. All right, folks, we'll be back. Stay with us. Welcome back, folks. Uh, having a little, few technical difficulties, but uh, we're, we're back to the cell phone. I, I always, you know, I always hate to have people 
talk on a cell phone. I've ditched my cell phone. I don't use it anymore. Uh, I don't even want it in the same room with me. Uh, so I do feel bad. We'll try Skype again in the next hour. But, uh, Tammy, it, this whole concept of um, a, a, well, a concept, <laughs> which is exactly what I said, the, the concept is, is a very, very important aspect to understand because, again, when we're born, we're born naked, and that includes our minds. We don't have anything in there to perceive there's no there's no snake or I guess uh, you refer to it as the tree of knowledge basically um, right. which which basically um, if you really understand what the Bible is saying it, it literally says that the more concepts that you take in the more artificiality um, and you also used the map as an example and I wanted you to the geography I wanted you to get into that but basically um, you're you're destined to be in hell, which again is this open air prison we already are in, if you take upon yourself all of these persons and concepts. So explain this. Right, and and it, it goes down back to just any concept. By bi means life, so biology means the thought of life. Geology means the thought of earth. Somebody's giving you those thoughts. You're buying those concepts. Rather than being in the relative state, now you're studying all these, these different states and different illusions and everything else. And in Genesis, it's actually the doctrine of uh, biogenesis, which means away from life, mind, and soul. Uh, meaning away from bio, meaning life. And gen means mind and soul in Greek. And um, you can read Wycliffe's version of the Bible from directly out of Greek. And in Genesis 8, it says, And God collected the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning was made the second day. That says that he took it up as a concept to clap something, to grasp it, to take it into the mind. That's what a concept is. You're grasping that concept with a grasping motion. They're taking you outside of the, your original state of being, which is God, and teaching you that you're something else in order to own you, God, which is the most horrifying, ab ab Horrent thing that the priest ever could have done, and that's why Jesus was going off on them. In um, Matthew 23, first started against the chief priests and Pharisee, the scribes that were writing these words, or the, the doctrine of the Pharisee, um, which is the leaven of the Pharisee. Um, he had gone to the disciples, and he said, what the heck are you doing teaching the leaven of the Pharisee? And they didn't, they didn't hear him. They said, well, we brought bread so many times before. He says, I'm not talking about bread. I'm talking about the doctrines that you teach. You're teaching man's law. You're teaching people to lay down. And he says, you're going to have the greater damnation because that's called delivery. They are delivering you up. Whoever's teaching you that you are not God and to enter into contract with the system, they're delivering you up. That's why, for instance, you've been seized by a name. So all of these false doctors, false prophets, doctor actually means to teach, of course, or teacher, and these false prophets are just telling you all sorts of concepts, but when you buy them is the time that you are fornicating. You're giving your body over to that landlord or Lord God, and it's just uh, well, this, is, this is very important because we take the word fornication once again out of context, and we immediately have been trained to uh, put that towards the word sex. <laughs> And, of course, sex sales sells, so why not? So fornication doesn't necessarily or even uh, ever mean that you're selling your body for sex. It means you're selling your body as a commodity to government. Right, by patronizing it, calling it father. Now you're calling yourself their son or their daughter, and they're giving you benefits and rights. They're selling those things to you, more concepts. The minute I call myself a female, if I call myself a female, I have to then purchase rights and benefits that come along with that through the legal process. It, it's a machine. Which is which is why you don't want to call yourself a woman, which is just a man with a womb, a new right. form and, of and man it, that can be patented. Right, and those are concepts. We already know what we are in our biological state. Go, uh, for an example, if anybody wants to go out and, and test this for themselves, Go tell a lion you're going to take his kids off of him because he might have been verbally abusive to the lioness. He's going to eat you, right? But <laughs> because he can't pick up concepts, 
only the human being um, in our relative state or in our various states of being that they put us into. We are picking up concepts. If you look at any other biology, we are backwards to any other animal on this planet, any other life on this planet. We are absolutely backwards. They're telling us how to dress, how to be, how to perceive ourselves, how to view ourselves, how to, you know, feminism. It teaches the female that she is not until she proves that she is. That's the most detrimental thing against the female ever is feminism or that political tool that has her specialized or so she thinks while it manipulates her, while it takes Eve out of that garden, restrains Adam or man from the garden, and it just raises the entire state. Well, what she doesn't know within feminism, she can play into this, play into the specialty and everything else. But when her usage is met, which is when the children age out that she's holding as pawns, she's just put away as garbage, and that's written in the first and second welfare theorem. This is all corporate welfare. You are, in your productivity, you are maintaining corporations on welfare, which was the premise of the Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation. They and pledged the, and charged that's the, you. That's part of the doctrine of, of basically protecting. The government is not protecting you as a flesh and blood soul, you know, being. He's, it's protecting its property, which is your corporation, your person. Okay. Right, and it's not even protecting that. It's using you as a corporate product or stock option. And when doing so, they perpetrate war against you. Right now we're in the action of fourth-generation warfare. Stemming all the way back to the colonies and the Civil War and Revolutionary War, they were perpetrating war against us. That's first-generation warfare. We're so far out. Now we're at fourth-generation warfare. They've decentralized everything, made it appear like there's all these departments and agencies and everything else. But it's still the same war. You're still in the same war theater. It's just now maintained under low-intensity conflict through, most of the time, the actions of winning hearts and minds, which is a war tactic. They uh, uh, put all of these pressures against you, and then they offer you uh, fix-alls, like welfare benefits and, and Social Security. But they're the ones that are pressurizing that. They control it's, the It's no different, right? then. It's no, no different than protection money. It's no different than gangland-style... We're going to harm you, but what, if you pass for protection, we'll leave you alone. Absolutely. And like they, they did these presentations back at uh, Jagger Hoover regarding like Al Capone and all of those. Al Capone was running uh, alcohol for the Bush, Anheuser Bush, right? So they took him out. That was a political action against him. He wasn't actually murdering anybody, he knew the game. He was working with Anheuser Bush. And if you go into the Association of Corporate Council, the Broadcasting Board of Governors, Board of Governors, Anheuser-Busch is your government. Microsoft is your government. All of these corporations are their government. So all of these presentations that they put out, Babyface Nelson, he was going after the system because he was a victim of uh, sexual predation. They put him in um, Boys Town International. They were sexually abusing him. When he got older and started coming out against that, that's when the sheep were presented with him being a bank robber and they had to kill him. But he was never a bad boy. Never, ever, ever. They had to take him out because they had a lot of information about Nebraska, about what Boy's Tongue was, about what all of these creations are. These are all presentations in order to get at the children. They human traffic. Make no doubt in your mind that this entity, this thing, is not human trafficking. This is genocide. They're targeting you, the human being, to discharge its bankruptcy. And you produce in all variants, including when they murder you. They're taking death derivatives upon your death. Now, death derivatives came in to protect pension risks of living too long. You can find this on Bloomberg. Well, and that's, that speaks to the insurance policies that we don't know about that they put on soldiers. And when every soldier die, it's, it's in the best interest of government to have a soldier die because the insurance payout is huge. Of course, the family doesn't get any of that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a disgusting, disgusting thing we're talking about. And it is the United States. We'll be back, folks. Welcome back, folks, to the Corporation Nation. I'm Clint Richardson. With me is Tammy Pepperman. That's TammyPepperman.org, T-A-M-I, Pepperman.org, and ChooseYourSide.org. And, Tammy, tell people where they can listen to your show. Um, I'm on every Thursday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on FreedomSlips.com Studio B, and again on Saturday night, 6 
to 8 p.m. on Studio B at freedomslips.com. And hopefully we'll get sent over to Revolution Radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Um, I had to get that in there. <laughs> well, let's... Um, you know, as you were speaking, I was reminded of, of one of my favorite quotes, although I never knew why it was my favorite quote. You know, it's, it's funny how you how perspective changes over the years as you learn, because now this, this quote has a, a completely new meaning to me. And as you were talking about priests uh, and how they deceive us and how they teach doctrine instead of reality and truth, uh, man will never be free until the last king is strangled with the entrails of the last priest. And I'm realizing that that is more of a true statement than I think anyone can possibly comprehend. And I appreciate you coming on today and explaining why that is actually true. Um, I, I wanted to sort of shift gears because one of my favorite subjects, and I believe it's probably one of your favorites, is, well, it, it's birth and, and what happens to us from our, our we age where we can't comprehend anything. We're forced into all sorts of contracts and numbers and uh, marks and concepts and everything else we've been talking about. Um, but what's interesting about it, as we said, and I want people to really get this because we're talking about the Bible. You must... Be <laughs> When the Bible talks about hell, uh, at least in the temporal realm here, y you must be dead to go to hell. You must die, literally, to be put in hell. So you're born, and again, you're innocent, you're living, you're free, you're sentient, you are a beautiful, living thing. And what happens? What happens, Tammy? You, you, you instantly get thrown into a dead pledge. You get thrown and you are turned, mutated, and you become, for all intents and purposes, you become a dead instrument, something that can be traded and commodity, and you're instantly put into hell, which again, look it up, folks. It's in the dictionary, the old dictionaries, the, 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 <laughs> the prison, the dungeon, the... <laughs> the place where they hold the debtors of the executure. This is okay. hell. We are living in hell, and we are immediately thrown into that death situation. Uh, so I wanted you to really explain the, the Sestra Kivai. I can't remember how to say it. Right. All of those different concepts. Right. Well, it starts out with recognition. It says you're created in an image. You're being recognized. Now, those words are a compilation of Greek and, and Latin, of course. Re means again. Co means with. GM in Greek means knowledge. And when you go to the name, the last name, that family name is called a cognomen. Now, when you put all of those together, it's with knowledge I give you. Somebody's giving you knowledge. Somebody's transporting you somewhere. Somebody's recognizing you. And you had quoted your favorite quote, which is so beautiful. Um, my favorite is actually from Rumi. Uh, by day I praised you and never knew it. By night I stayed with you and never knew it. Mm -hmm. I always thought that I was me, but no, I was you and never knew it. Now, the Sestriki Vi Act, it's actually French, say to KV, by, which means with what cause do you live? I live for you. When I look out of my eyes, I only see you. I, they've taught human beings to look inward at itself, so it's always protecting itself. It's not looking outward like it's supposed to be. That's, that's, that's their relative state, is you see with your eyes right now, not later, not in imagination, not with a string of concepts called a train of thought. But the actual absolute day of being is I live for you. You are the... The being that I see, you are me. That's what Jesus meant. Take up your cross and follow me. You are me. And that's where the Sestri Gavai comes in because it's telling you, look, with what cause do you live? It says you've been lost at sea. And, and this water is the river Styx. When you go back to the Greek mythology, it's a river of lost souls. 
And on this river of lost souls, here's your vessel floating down the water and everything else. Well, <clears throat> okay, so advertisement. Ad means with. Vert means like a verge, something thrown in your path. So you're floating down this river sticks, and through advertisements, you're being altered of your original heading. And what are you crashing into? You're crashing into banks along the shore. Now, mm-hmm. court is defined as a bank. A hospital is a place of deposit according to the 1864 Geneva Convention. The Red Cross is, is a prisoner of war camp. It picks up prisoners of war. So you're crashing your vessel into all of these banks, banks, courts, hospitals, and they're throwing these things in your path. Hedges, hedge funds, verts, verges. These are all concepts that are altering your heading along the way. And so you're taking up all these titles. So you go into the bank and you say, I am this, and you go into the hospital and you say, I am this. That's a diagnosis. That's calling you something else. When in reality, they've taken away the ability of the human being to interact with itself and each other, and they've claimed that sex is illegal. So human touch, when you are without human touch, and you can study this with the rhesus monkey study, when you are without human touch together as a unit, as a whole, you're suffering failure to thrive. So as you fail to thrive, your body from the inside out starts going into atrophy, which is death. So you are feeling this ease and this comfort. There's no such thing as a disease. They're diagnosing you based on what you're feeling because of this, this death. You're in atrophy. You're not touching each other. You're not being with each other. And when you are with each other, you're looking at each other as objects. Oh, my gosh, she's so sexy. Oh, my gosh, he's so hot. You're looking at the concepts. You are not talking or speaking in frequency, which is pheromones. All other biology on this planet speaks to itself in within pheromones. It's interesting you say pheromones because, you know, I have this theory, and, you know, p- please keep in mind that this is a theory. I can't really prove it. But I look I look around, and I I, I see the, like, perfumers, for instance. Perfume is a, is a really good uh, example. You spray yourself with perfume. You're covering up your scent. You're covering up everything about you, <laughs> all of your pheromones, and you're, you're actually repulsing people instead of attracting people. And if you are attracting people, you'll be attracting That's the wrong kind of people because that you're not absolutely. attracting them on pheromones. The other aspect of that is the birth control pill, and I've seen studies now, and they're very convincing. That the, See, what happens is people, people get on the pill. And the pill completely changes their whole makeup, and their pheromones are off, and everything's off. They start dating. They, they, they get pregnant. People get married. Suddenly, they get off the pill, the pill, the birth control pill, and what starts flowing again? The scent, the pheromones. All of a sudden, people realize they're not attracted to each other in any way, shape, or form. It was all completely a concept. It was c- completely a physical... It was crap. It didn't, it didn't mean anything because when you're together, you have that pheromonal and harmonic connection. I know exactly what you're talking about. Folks, we'll be back. Stay with us. All right, folks. We are back. Welcome back. Uh, you know, <laughs> Tammy, I'm going to I'm gonna give you an open invitation anytime you want to come back and suffer through all these commercials to, to, uh, to, 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 you know, speak as you're speaking and I, I, I you know, I am. Uh, give a shout out to our chat room, corporationnation.chitango.com. dot uh, and the same sentiment is 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 seems to be in there. I'm very very happy that you joined me today. Um, well, let's go let's go back to the uh, again. I'm going to butcher the butcher the the Latin or the Greek, whatever it is. The sister cuve. For what reason or purpose do you live? And then the rules go on, and it says that a judge can declare you dead if you don't appear in seven years. That's seven years after appropriation. So in your local uh, community, the appropriations committee comes in, and it appropriates or takes property. So by zip code, it targets you. If it needs to take you out through CPS, it's going to do that through its principal agent at the school. If it needs to take you out through adult protection, it's going to take you out. That's when it's grabbing you. That's when the seven years start. Okay, so if you don't come in as to be living within that seven years and say, wait a second, you're coming after me with what? 
you don't have any cards here, you don't have any authority, and I will show you, and that's when you lay your bet down. Well, the second part of that, or the other part of that, is when you do come in, you have to come in and claim the estate. It says you're lost at sea. The man is lost at sea, and it has never claimed the estate. And so we facilitated this last year. I signed a contract with Bo, and we contracted him to that union where he picked up my estate. He saved me. And this is what it says in the Fisher Kivai Act. The male has to come in and grab her. He has to do a hostile takeover. So we, we went ahead and obliterated my franchise, and then I gave it willingly to him and appeared before him as a special deposit. That means that I'm calling him my judge. That was the original contract we had with each other in the garden. I don't do anything wrong, so I'm not going to be judged wrongly. I'm not going to be administered in any way, except for if I give myself over to the Lord God and I patronize that thing instead of my and, own house. And maybe we should, be, just to be clear that everybody understands, when you say give yourself over to the Lord God, you're you're saying that in, in not in capitalized letters. Explain that to people real quick. Absolutely not. First uh, Corinthians 6, Jesus said you can only fornicate by giving your body over to the Lord God. Quote, uh, the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. That excludes everything else. That says you can only fornicate by patronizing another. When you're asking Congress, which means with transgression, that's your transgressor. When you're asking Congress to represent you, you're patronizing that thing and calling it your father. When you ask an attorney to represent you, you're calling it your father. When you're patronizing a country, when you're patronizing a concept, you're calling it your father. You're in the action of patriotism. Which this is, is, the, is this the uh, parents patria doctrine? The, the, the state owns the child, basically? Right. And, and they make up ways to own the child. Now, the original rule, parents patria, says that with cause, they can come in and be your father. Well, if they come in with CPS and say, well, we heard allegations that you did this or this, and you could be a risk to, to your child, that's not cause. That is not warrant. That, that has nothing to do with anything. So they're coming in fraudulently, and they need to be handed back an equitable estoppel. It says, hey, look, this guy's trying to bring me into court based on fraud. This court doesn't have any jurisdiction at all because this is fraud. It, it's founded in fraud. I'm not to be here. That's what an equitable estoppel is. And follow the elements. Every court case you've ever been involved in is just a fraud on its face. It's a means and mechanism of using you, the product. That's one way that you produce. So what is, a, what is an equitable estoppel? It, it it says that somebody's brought you into court based on false pretenses in order to make another actor move. So if an attorney comes at you and it says, well, we believe this without cause, it's asking the judge to move against you. It has brought you into court on controversy. If you try to argue anything in court and you don't do an equitable estoppel and you say, well, no, I didn't do it, you're subjecting yourself to their jurisdiction already. So they're already maintaining, right. And so you don't even want to ever go into court. Equitable estoppel says, no, wait, there's no case here. Get out of my, my garden. Get away from me. So you're basically saying nothing, no, no one was harmed, um, <clears throat> and therefore there can be no case, right? Absolutely, and because harm only refers to a human being. There's no possible way that you can roll through a stop sign. You can almost hit somebody. You can almost do this. You can damage a building. You can injure this. Injure means to bring into law. That's yeah, why I was going to say, that's, that's one of the tricks they use, is that, well, this, this party has been injured, when in fact the word injured doesn't mean what we think it does. Right. It says, I got you as treasure trove, which is the whole concept of court. Con means with. Trover means treasure trove. Controversy. Every controversy says that they've got you treasure trove. Ha ha, I found you. You're mine. Because so, so you're lost is, it, is it fair? Is it fair to say that um, an injury, which again means to bring in to a jury or to the law, um, is it is it safe to say that the the only form of injury or to injure they use is the is is the artificial person, the the, con, the concept, the straw man, whatever you want to call it. 
Right. Under witchcraft. They're practicing the actual sense of witchcraft. With law, conjure, they're bringing you into court. After you receive a summon, you can only summon the dead. If you answer a summon, that's the evidence required for 38 U.S.C. subsection 108. The seven-year absence presumption of death, you're overcoming the presumption by saying, yes, I'm dead. Here, let me answer the summons. (laughs) <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. So if you answer a summons, you're admitting to be dead. Right, you're overcoming the presumption that you're dead. Because it's only through only through witchcraft can a summons be made. <laughs> and, That's great. Right, and through your works and actions, you are known. And so you're evidencing through your works that you're dead by answering a summons. It was only calling out for the dead. Now, if you're living as to the proper name, and, and this is something that's so hard to conceive, the last name is a family or species name. It tells you it's a family name, but that signifies you're a new genus. You're not me anymore. You've been cut from my garment, the body of Christ, and now you're described as something else. You're the body of Christ. When you render yourself and, and are crucified by title, you're taking yourself off of the garment and calling yourself something other than the garment. Well, what about a name like, say, John the Baptist? Was that... Um... I think it's a description. It's a yeah. description. Anything is a description. Teacher, doctor. You know, I, years ago I was taking so much title. I, I went into law. I was going to be an attorney. I ended up going into sociology, psychology, political science. And I had all these titles. Those are each one a, 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 a copy hold. It, it writes easement through my body. The same body that, that they refer to as real estate. That only refers to the human being. And so I'm drawing all of these easements. I'm a doctor. I'm a teacher. And I had all these titles and everything. But that gave them ability to cross that easement and take derivatives off of that production. I was calling myself a fiction. Yeah, yeah. Well, you again, you're admitting to the... You're admitting to being (laughs) dead. It's so... it's, It's funny, but at the same time, again... Admitting such puts you in hell, and it's. It, I, I wish people could grasp that. I. It's amazing. We'll be back, folks. Stay with us. All right, folks. Wow. Like I said, this has been a. It's been a pleasure for me. I hope that people have felt the same way. It's very enlightening. Um, this this whole etymology of words is is absolutely one of the most fascinating things. Uh, you know, just uncovering. The the syllable structure of the words, how, you know, each each part of the word means a different thing, and boy, until we really can deconstruct that, and we can really uh, now, unlike you, I, I mean, I, you, you're pulling dates and Bible verses and everything from under your hat, and I I don't know how you do that. I got to be honest. I mean, I I I have to have it in front of me, and that's why I have this huge blog of mine and all the research I do just so I can recall it, you know, but you seem to be able to have, you have the gift of being able to just uh, bring this stuff up. And I know that's due diligence. I know that's, uh, you know, a lot of time spent doing this. So I, uh, my hat's off to you. Um, Jesus said for us to experience it in first Corinthians 13. So everything that I speak of, I, I realize the relative state and then because of their, um, attacks upon me and coming at me to sell me these concepts, then I can see the delineation in between, and that's all I do. Um, but I do speak your words. You already know these things in logic. You know what the truth is. But the female, we're so impulsive. We're naturally impulsive. And so we can be bought off so easy. For You know, I used to buy things on sale just because they were on sale. Now, that is not saving money, but we're taught that, <laughs> that is saving money. Yeah, you know? that's funny. It's crazy because we, we can be bought off, and it's silly at the same time. You know, that's that's something that's not relative to any logic or any walk or anything else. But I was able to buy into that, and, and that's oh, embarrassing. Oh, I, I will, I will physically, I will look in them right in the eye, and I say, "Don't you tell me I just saved money when I just spent a hundred dollars in groceries?" Well, you kidding right. me? I mean, I I'll tell them that's a patently fallacy and ridiculous. I mean, because <laughs> I like to challenge people's thoughts, you know. But <laughs> it is right. ridiculous. It is, but it took me a long time to realize that, and and that's the saddest part. And that's what Jesus said: "Forgive yourself. Don't don't hold on to these things." Because if well, I couldn't, 
you know, I, I, just, I would feel so stupid because I bought so many concepts in order to get to this point in time and being spanked for buying those concepts each and every time to, to be able to speak these things. You know, it took a lot of, of shame and embarrassment throughout the years. Well, speaking of that, I mean, you, 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 it sounds like you realized something that is a, it's a very difficult concept, um, in and of itself. But it's not really the concept. It's actually the recognition, recognition of, of nature and the re recognition of the way we're, we're actually built. And that is the, the difference, which, you know, they're trying to basically make everybody a combination of male and female today, but you recognize the difference between the male and the female uh, 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 sex, if you will, the, the the different ways that we think. And a lot of people don't want to talk about it. They say it's sexist. They say it's... A, but oh. really, the natural law, when we're talking about this, I mean, it's really a complementary uh, yes. match between and the male and the female. And that's the perfect word, because to complement you as the female... That means I'm taking up the slack for you, and you're taking up the slack for me. But if we complement each other, oh, you're so sexy, that has a different meaning altogether. <laughs> well, you, be, you basically become a, uh, alone, you, you, alone you have power, but together you are more powerful than you can possibly ever be alone. Absolutely, and that's what Jesus said in 1 Corinthians 7 as well. It's better to be married than it is to be prayed on, and... and Marriage is not as to their perverted definition. When I'm yeah. speaking your word, I'm acting as your clerk, your clergy. I only speak your word. That's a marriage. That's a union. And that's what they perverted. They taught me, the female, to go off and patronize them, not to look at your logic and call it logic, but now I have emotional abuse. If you tell me I can't, we can't afford something and then I feel picked on because I can't have that new car or the new computer or the new television, I can go out and claim to the other daddy there that you're picking on me. You've emotionally abused me. You've injured me in some way and brought me into law. And, of course, it's going to jump in and prey on me. It's going to raise the whole estate as I pay legal fees and he pays legal fees. And all that's going to be left is the attorneys running off to the bank while I sit there with nothing. He sits there with nothing. And our children are the worst uh, victims in all of these things because... What they're doing is they're taking our children's inheritance. Mm -hmm. What's amazing, as we we're kind of discussing on the break too, is is the uh, how the media, movies, television, uh, books, everything, are all geared towards promoting exactly what you're talking about. The attorney's nest egg, which is divorce. Breakup of the family is the number one business for an attorney, and it is horrible. And they teach women, well, they teach men. I mean, I'll I'll say this: it really pisses me off when I see that every show I see, they're putting the woman in the power position and making the man look like a fool. Because and they have to. She's the one that's assigning bank assignments. When I go out. Uh, before my process, before I gave my hand over to my executor, and the realization of what she was actually doing, when she fills out a welfare application, it asks her to assign the male to be responsible for that debt. When she signs a birth certificate, that asks the male to be a, a, a banking assignment. You're assigned to be responsible for all liability created by Eve, your saboteur. She's your saboteur. If she's partaking of the tree of knowledge, she's contracted with the Lord God, the landlord, the judge, the state, whoever you want to put in that position. When she's contracting with that thing, she is your saboteur because you're sitting there. Okay, the, the female, we talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. We are called the informant on the birth certificate. Yeah. We are called the informant on an application. The reason for that is that we always still be, we don't feel like that's our predator. We feel like that's our friend through the action of hearts and mind, which is a war tactic. So if a female goes into court, it says, well, give me all of your assets. She's like, oh, he's got stuff under the mattress. I know he's got like $1,000 in gold in there. He's got all this silver in there that he didn't claim on his and everything else. So the attorneys are just sitting there salivating because she's filling everything. Well, what is your instinct? Your instinct is to secure the family, secure the home. So over here, 
you're already pit up against her because you're like, no, don't say that. Don't, don't. They're going to take it. They're going to take it. They're going to take it. You're trying to hold on to it to care of the family while she's over here with loose sip, lips, taking ships, raising the entire state just simply by contracting with that thing. Just simply by being an informer. And, of course, the mob would, would uh, go out of the way to kill an informer so that they could keep their assets. <laughs> I'm not saying men should kill their women. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because most of the time she's innocent. She believes that she's she being protected by the state. She believes she's doing the right thing. Right. And that's where the action of education comes in. It's actually psychological warfare. Um, the treatise on education, I urge everybody to read that. It's called Emil, E-M-I-L-E virus. So, and it breaks down how to break the human being for dummies. Could it you, tells uh, you how e Emil, E-M-I-L-E, by Rousseau, the French book, and I can send you a copy of that as soon as we're done here, but it's the most profound because it says how you are taught to be that Spartan. When you go back all the way to the Homericans, Homer wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. Those are fiction. The Homericans are the same fiction. Attorneys came in and interpreted for you the history of Greece in eight volumes called The History of Greece. You can find volume one, I think, was written by George Crow. You know him as that special esquire. So here they tell you about all of your history, and they make you patriots. They create you to be Spartans. They create you to be Romans. They create you to be Americans. They create you to be Mexicans. And, and all of this, you're pit against each other. By color, that is a concept. Color is a concept. Culture is a concept. These are all concepts. And so we're pit up against each other and we're always divided. The male, the female, the group, which is <clears throat> communism, feminism, and everything. Those are all communist theories. And, and this is kind of why they put that on, a, on, a, on most of the government documents, right? They want to know, are you white? Are you black? Are you Mexican? Absolutely. Because what they want to divide up? you. Yep. What title are you going to take up so we can crucify you? And what's what's crazy about that, and really sad about it, if you ask me, is that the reason that they're portraying that is that they want to give you a special status or a special benefit because you're a minority, because you're a woman, because you're a black woman, because you're a, a single woman with children. I mean, it, it's all it's all to. it's preying on the sympathy, and you're actually you're actually like the again the Bible says don't respect that you don't deserve a special status above other men. Uh, females included, just because you're a, you, know, you nobody deserves the status. Everybody should be helping everybody else, but instead, well, government's going to protect you. That's the Federal Reserve. It sets up reservation of rights by which to redistribute the opposite sex. Well, you know, it's funny. Managing theories abound, but in practice, this this song that's playing now, it. it, it <laughs> um, you know, if if we weren't actually utilizing the corporate structure that, that that song is actually describing, if we were to, uh, as as Tammy quotes from the Bible, to divest ourselves from it instead of continuously and stupidly investing ourselves into the system, investing into every corporation through the pension system, irresponsibly allowing government to invest your money for you in its behalf. If we were smart, we would do as the Bible tells us to do. There is no debt if you're not part of the debt system. Divest yourself from it and let the other people who are invested in it go nuts. Let them dance around like sheep and and you don't have to worry about it. it. It doesn't exist unless you allow it to exist in your realm, in your consciousness, in your reality. And that's <laughs> I'm, that's the beauty of the Bible. As I'm discovering, and, and please, I'm a novice when it comes to the Bible. I'm just now sitting down and actually reading the thing instead of just looking quote here, quote there, quote there. I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. The, the, it's, it's like the best advice that you'll ever get from anybody. It's amazing. Absolutely. <laughs> this is how to live. There's two ways to go. You have two sides. There's two paths. You can take one or the other, and that's, that's it. And, um, you know, you were talking about debt. Debt is actually translated into credit. What is credit? 
That's your goodwill, the will of God. They've called the will of God debt and subscribed you or subjected you as a minion to that debt. And you can read this by going to the small government um, or small business association. It used to be called the Small Government Loan Service. Now it's the SBA.gov, Small Business Administration. Read about QSIP. Read about the Devonshire Participation Program, which sounds so beautiful, Devonshire Participation. Oh, goody, we get to have fun. That means a debt secured by your own earning power. You're not securing a loan. You are subscribing to debt. You're taking on the millstone around your neck. <laughs> yeah, we. You know, I I looked into the QSIPs and how they're assigned to each uh, each person who's convicted of a crime, and that's the when a, a QSIP is. Court case. Yeah, a QSIP court is basically case. the number they assign to securities, basically. So you've Everything. got a, a you've got an entire industry built around trading the value and productivity of prisoners. <laughs> I human mean, trafficking. That's human, human trafficking. trafficking. But it's all, I mean, you know, to sum this up, uh, Tammy, this is all human trafficking. We're not, we have never departed from talking about human trafficking. No, no. And it, that's what makes the world go around. Insurance. You are the guarantee. Insuring. You're the guarantee. When you buy into this stuff, you're guaranteeing that these things happen to you. I urge everybody to read the story of Job. You're Job. You're patronizing Satan and the landlord or the Lord God at the same time. And it's poking on you to find out how much you will take before you're going to choose your side. <laughs> I mean, I am, I am laughing here, folks. I am laughing because that's what actually happens when you really start waking up in ways that you could never have possibly imagined and you look back at your life and your participation in such a fraud and you say what the heck how could this have all gone on without uh, even the slightest clue that it was happening how could I I mean I feel literally like I've been a worker on some machine floor in China compartmentalized and having no idea what the heck it is I'm making, just make just just working on some cog that's going to be some larger part of a larger cog that's going to make someone else rich. That it's basically how I feel right now. Right, and that's what Jesus said. He said in Second uh, Corinthians thirteen, he says, "You can only this can only occur if you're reprobate. If somebody has your your estate probated, somebody's came in abatement of a freehold." That's what happens. And to be in reprobate or be a re reprobate, you have to be contracted. You have to be on probation of some kind. Well, what's probation? When they call you a bad girl in school or a bad boy in school and indoctrinate you through their Hitler youth camp, that's what those are, or their Hitler youth camps called churches and Sunday school, they're teaching you that you're bad. Get over that aspect. Stop believing in these concepts. If you have never harmed a human being with intent to harm a human being, you are perfect. You have never done anything bad in your life. If you've offended somebody's ego, you haven't harmed them. If you've stabbed them with your tongue or you've shot daggers at them with your eyes, those are your own concepts. You cannot hurt a feeling. An emotion is created. Emotion, it signifies epsilon in motion. Epsilon is the stopping point or the ohm. A body in motion stays in motion. Don't stop the body. Don't adhere or don't play into emotion. Stop, stop feeling like your heart is hurt when you're sad or when you're lost or when you feel alone. Those things, um, the, the physical aspect, yes, that feels uncomfortable. That feels uh, you're at disease. But when you have the ability to feel emotional pain, you're in the past tense. Something you feel that something's wrong with you. You are looking at yourself from the outside in and judging yourself, calling yourself a bad girl or bad boy because you're seeking to be good. That's you terrible. Know, They've indoctrinated you to be slaves in your own mind. I, I realize now when I think of my own indoctrination into all of this churchy stuff. I realize now that 
people actually believe that the Bible is something that tells you what that explains de- uh, what's going to happen or what you should do for death. Nobody thinks of it, <laughs> thanks to the the religions out there and the doctrines. It, it, it all revolves around death or the afterlife when the whole time it's explaining to you how to live, how to right. not be dead. I mean, it's, that's a right. profound, profound realization. Absolutely, and that's how you're under control. You are feeling fear in death. You don't want to be just in case you're not going to be tomorrow. That's narcissism. If you're missing yourself before you're gone, that's narcissism. When you're striving to be this title to hand down a name to your children, that's narcissism. You're patronizing a name rather than your own house, your own children, yourself, each other. You're supposed to be patronizing each other. There's only one father. Guess what? I learned from you. I learned from you and you and you and you. You're my father. There's only one father because we speak the same word. We walk the same way. Tammy Pepperman, folks. T-A-M-I Pepperman dot com. Choose Your Side, a very aptly named website. Chooseyourside.org and uh, freedomslips.com is actually where your show is being broadcast, right? Yep, and hopefully we'll hear you tomorrow as well, and we'll carry on with our conversation. Yes, yeah, so I've, I've been invited to partake in the in the show tomorrow if anyone wants to join us. And that's, uh, what time was it again? Uh, six, six to eight? Uh, yes, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern, and Eastern. it's on Studio B over at freedomslips.com. Sounds good. I feel, like I said, I, I, I accepted your invitation, although I feel like uh, more of a student around you than I do a, a teacher. Absolutely not. The male is always the director within your logic. It took me a long time to, to realize what logic it was and what impulse was and all of these things. Well, I appreciate you joining me, Tammy. We'll definitely have you back anytime. Open invitation. Uh, you know, I think uh, Monday I have scheduled uh, Miss Rima LeBeau, Dr. Rima, and her husband, if, if I'm uh, m- not mistaken, uh, Major General Stubblebine will be talking about some vaccine stuff. All right, folks. Thanks again. We'll see you Monday. <laughs>